Defense News in a Nutshell, your fortnightly guide to all that's happening in MINDEF and the SCF in under 5 minutes. Here's what happened from the 16th to the 29th of May. Fighter jets scramble to the skies to take out an unknown aircraft. A CH-47 Chinook helicopter carries out underslung operations with a light strike vehicle, while Apache attack helicopters take out ground targets. This action-packed scenario was played out to thousands at Payaleva Air Base as part of the RSCF open house themed Defending Our Skies. The public also got up close and personal with the RSCF's latest aircraft and weapon systems. I think this has been a great exhibition. It really gives us great confidence about um, the Singapore Air Force and how it's going to protect us on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, fills us with a lot of pride. Yeah, My family is very happy to be here. Yeah, it's very exciting. They have a lot of uh, displays this year and quite a lot of uh, shows lined up for us. So it's quite a well day spent. The open house also featured an exhibition showcasing the RSCF's aircraft and weapon systems simulators, as well as stories of its transformation and its airmen and women in action. There was strong commitments and resolve among defence ministers to combat transboundary terror threats at the 10th ASEAN Defence Ministers' Meeting, or ADMM, held at Vientiane, Laos. The ministers also agreed that defence and military establishments could play a key role in the fight against terrorism. These included building up information and intelligence sharing platforms as well as conducting joint operations such as the recent ADMM Plus Maritime Security and Counter-Terrorism Exercise. The threat of terrorism is real. It can potentially disrupt the region. So there was a very serious regard by almost all the defence ministers in dealing with this threat. Singapore shared that we could do more in terms of information sharing and intelligence. Uh, that we had to also share resources as well as conduct joint operations. Defence Minister Dr Ng Eng Hen and the other ASEAN Defence Ministers also signed the 10th ADMM Joint Declaration, which underscored the ADMM's resolve to cooperate internationally and regionally to combat the transnational threat of terrorism, as well as its commitment to practising and observing international protocols, such as the Code for Unplanned Encounters at Sea. 26-year-old specialist cadet Kanan Verapandian had to do extra training just so that he could keep up with his younger and fitter peers. That determination and commitment drove him to do his best and earned him the silver bayonet in the specialist cadet course. Hard work and true determination will never fail off. To keep up with their fitness and to tackle the challenges at the same time, I did my own training after my free period. Specialist Cadet Kanan graduated with 1,205 other specialist cadets from the Army, Navy and the Air Force at a parade at Pasilaba Camp, where Chief of Defence Force Major General Perry Lim was the reviewing officer. As leaders, you also need to give your soldiers a sense of purpose for what they are doing. We are depending on you to help them see the need and importance of defending our country. The graduation parade marked the completion of the 22-week Specialist Cadet course where the graduates trained under rigorous and realistic conditions to develop leadership and combat skills and deepen their understanding of the other vocations in the SEF. For more details on these stories, visit mindef.gov.sg. Now let's check out what's buzzing on our social media channels. A recent ISIS video showing young children in unarmed combat and drills with rifles and knives has been making its rounds on the internet. See Dr. Ong's Facebook post on why the fight against terrorism is not only global, but also about winning the hearts and minds of the younger generation. Well, that's our defense news in a nutshell. Get to know us more through one of our social media channels. This is Mike from Power98, signing off.